Mike, uh, today Desmond Ritter spoke to the media, and I want you to get a, a, a feel for some of the things he was talking about. Because, listen, think about the offseason from Desmond Ritter's standpoint. All he heard was Lamar. All he heard was, is he going to be QB number one? All he heard was, are they drafting somebody else? And he continues to hear that, and he will until draft night is done or the draft is over. And, again, maybe the Falcons taking a a, a shot, Mike, on a uh, – a fourth or fifth round quarterback shouldn't be any shocker. That means nothing to Desmond Ritter. But if they were to do it in the first round, to your point, right. that's a different animal. No, you've got your backup here, and it's pretty, it's pretty solid. We got uh, Taylor Heineke, and he's not going anywhere, and he knows his role. Said that to us in the interview when we, uh, the day after he got signed. But yeah, you can still obviously get somebody in here, and whether you're gonna, again, the NFL's got these crazy rules about not having three quarterbacks, but whatever. Practice squad guy, that's where he probably wind up. But you need another body in there. You got to you got to have three quarterbacks for practice anyway. So you're going to take a flyer on somebody late, and you maybe develop them. So be it. Let's hear Desmond Ritter. We'll get to our NFL blitz here in just a second because I think you're going to be surprised at who our former general manager says he would take. Ritter today talking about him being quarterback number one. Yeah, there was a conversation. I don't know at what point, you know, in the off season, um, but you know, the, I know those guys trust me, R and Terry, um, and, and you know, it's just been they, you know, they've told me that that they trust me, and you know, that they see what I do out on the field, they see my leadership, um, and you know, they, that that's what they want. And so, you know, I'm just going to keep continuing to be myself, be who I am, uh, be the leader I can be, and, and go out there and just keep proving myself. Okay, so they trust him. He's saying he's hearing that from our GM right. and our head coach. Great. What about dealing with the Lamar rumors? What's that been like? Yeah, I mean, there's not too many people asking me that because, you know, I'm just with my family and there's the guys that I work with in the offseason. Uh, but, no, I can control what I can control. Um, you know, one of those things that, that's just obviously something that I can't control. Like I said, I'm not in those meetings. Uh, I'm not, you know, Arthur, Mr. Blank, who's the owner here. So I, I'm, not, I'm not the one making the calls, um, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, when they told me my role, you know, that's what I knew it was going to be, and I just took it and went with it. There you go. I wish it was like a Chappelle skit where he's like, what you mean how I feel? How you think I feel? They've been saying this all off season. You would like it? I don't like it. I got a chip on a chip on a chip on my shoulder. Yeah, by the way, it's very, uh, Chris was just saying in our ear, our turtle, our engineer, that's a very Matt Ryan-like response. Control what you can control. It is. Get back to work tomorrow. He's got that part of this now. Um, and what I mean by that, it's good, but he's not going to give in. And like what I'm saying is just open up and be like, Hell, how you think I feel? I've been hearing it all off season. Well, I mean, I mean you know, wouldn't it be funny if he said, you know, I got to be honest, man. I've only played four games. That Lamar Jackson's been an MVP, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, what do you expect for this guy to say? Look, he's still a very young player, and he's a very young man, and he's trying to handle this with grace and class, and he did. And he's very stock, and there's really nothing there. But what he, 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 again, he knew and he's learned very quick, quickly not to throw any gas near any fire when questions like that are posed by the media. We're listening to Desmond Ritter. It's Dukes and Bell Sports Radio ninety two nine. The game voluntary workouts underway for the Falcons and uh, this will go into the draft guys obviously next week and then they'll get into uh, OTAs and but all he's there stuff. as a leader well, of the team hey, certainly of the offense he is there no coaches by the way coaches not allowed to be on the field none of that stuff so th if you have this organized team workout thing in your mind which is OTAs that's not this this is show up on your own right. and do do what you need to do here's Ritter talking about why this feels different Mike from year one Oh, I would say for myself, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's a completely different vibe. Obviously, like I said, 365 days ago, I was back in Louisville uh, getting ready for a draft, so I wasn't here then. Um, but, you know, it, it's a good vibe. You know, everyone's excited to be back here, ready to work. Um, everyone's, you know, just, just happy to be here. Just, you know, there's obviously no complaints. Everyone was ready to get back and, and just ready to go to work. Okay. One more thing. It's Dukes and Bell. Um, what are the expectations for the team. This is from quarterback number one. Uh, obviously, we want to go out there. We want to win the division, obviously, number one. Um, and then number two, obviously, is go out there and win a Super Bowl. I mean, that's what every team is out here uh, preparing to do, you know, coming through OTAs and camp and everything. Uh, but we want to go out there and we just want to get better. Like I said before, we want to progress in everything that we do, whether it's mentally, physically, as a team, emotionally, we want to progress. Uh, we, we never want to be complacent and stay where we're at. Um, and we obviously never want to go backwards. There you go. I don't think you can argue with any of that in anything you're doing. So, I mean, like, now he just got the only thing this guy needs is more reps. And we're going to, he's going to get them. We're going to see it. And then we can uh, debate and follow the other quarterbacks that are drafted in this, in this draft. We're going to see if and when Lamar signs with someone, if not with his Ravens. And these will be, you know, talking points for many Falcon fans for weeks and months and perhaps years to come, right? It will be. Um, 
I want to judge Desmond Ritter for what Desmond Ritter does. Uh, but I will tell you, and I've said this, you know, if we're not in the quarterback business, which we're not, and we've got another top 10 pick and we don't take a quarterback, these guys, whatever their career turns out to be, we're going to look back and say, hey, Ritter wins two Super Bowls for us. We're not having this conversation. But if we don't, Mike, you're like, well, what if these other guys that they're about to pick go on and have great success in the NFL? And we will always wonder. So it's just what it is. But I do want to judge Desmond Ritter for, for what he does on the field. And for the four games, he progressively got better. I just don't want them to protect him. And the way you don't protect him is you get better players around him and you let him open up this offense. And we're going to talk more about the draft here. But I tell you what, I just the, the more I've we've looked at all the different names and we've looked at a lot of exciting names and certainly, you know, def- defensive needs. You, you can draft an edge rusher because you've only got these guys on one-year deals, these veterans you brought in in free agency. I still maybe, I'll go back to it. I said it earlier, offensive line. Protect, if, you, if you want to protect this guy and give him the best shot, two ways of doing that. You could go get a Bijan Robinson, which would take a lot of pressure off him, or you could go get another, get a, a guard that could be a potential pro bowler, a guy that would plug in opposite Lindstrom forever, and that would be a Skaronsky. And I think, you know, but again, some would say, Carl, that's a bit of an over, he's, it's an overshot at eight. You got to maybe trade down for that. We're going to see what the plan is. We are counting down to the NFL draft next Thursday. Mm-hmm. And a quick reminder, by the way, next Thursday, Mike Conti, West Durham, the voice of our Falcons, Dave Archer, analyst, they will be at the Falcons draft party at Atlantic Station. That starts around, uh, I think, 6, but they're going to be out there from 8 until 11, all the way through the first round. So we got you covered right here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. 